Okay, guys. So I recorded a I recorded earlier today, but for some reason my my volume wasn't working. Now it is working. I was talking about the disgusting overreach of control by the radical left in this Trump trial. But before we get into this video, guys, I want to say thank you to all the new subscribers. My recent video, my recent video explaining the Brett Cooper situation and her misunderstanding of the red pill space is doing really well. It's getting over a thousand, it's gotten over a thousand views. And to all the new subscribers, I want to say thank you for subscribing. Welcome to the channel. Here we care about truth and reality. We're not going to play the degenerate woke games with radical left. Today's video is a bit more of a serious topic because what we're, what we have to analyze is the total state of corruption in America that's going on now. Right now, Donald Trump is being forced to attend a complete sham trial where it's a criminal trial about how decades ago he paid money to a porn star so that she wouldn't share information about him sleeping with her. Instead of going after actual criminals in their lawless state where there are murderers going free, where, where there are countless instances of the left doing things that are far worse, 10 times, 100 times worse than paying a porn star who you slept with decades ago, paying money so that she wouldn't talk about it. I'm gonna show you guys examples of what the radical left is not choosing to, to prosecute, what New York is not choosing to prosecute, even though it is far, far, far worse than what we're seeing here. This video, this is a book of the compiled endless crimes he committed. Far worse than paying a porn star <laughs> money so that you wouldn't talk. This is a book compiled from the laptop from hell that shows endless depravities, endless crime, literally just pages and pages of crime. It's fantastic that this book even got made. Like, I can't, I can't even show most of this. I can't show most of this. Yeah, I don't think I can even show this on YouTube. An entire book of what the radical left is not interested in. They're not prosecuting him for this. But even worse, Hillary Clinton. Now, of course, we know that the radical left is not going to prosecute somebody who is a protected class in the, in the Marxist ideology because virtue to them is determined by your identity in the intersectionalist victimhood hierarchy. You know, there's race, there's gender, there's sex, sexual orientation, sexual proclivity, and your identity is what determines your virtue. Oh, she's a woman? She can't possibly be responsible for these disgusting, heinous crimes. Just looking at this makes me upset because, I mean... You see the corruption of the left. New York is not prosecuting Hillary Clinton, even though she had her subpoenaed cell phone smashed with a hammer and her laptop. New York doesn't care about that. They also don't care about her husband who flew to Epstein's Island 26 times. What is worse, paying a porn star decades ago some money so that you wouldn't talk about it so that your marriage will stay fine or going to Epstein's Island 26 times? The reason why the left isn't interested in this is because Hillary Clinton is a protected class. She's a woman. Oh, she must be a good person as a result. Not a single indictment. Not a single indictment for Hunter Biden. And you know what's ironic? Is I can't show most of what Hunter Biden did on YouTube because then YouTube would censor me just like the federal government asked news organizations to censor the story before the election. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Anyway, but Donald Trump gets indicted more than Al Capone. Did you guys know that? He literally got indicted more than Al Capone, one of the biggest drug lords of all time. The reason why this is possible, guys, and th this is what I wanted to talk about in this video, which is that I've been in a very elite leftist circles, and they all think that they're better than you. They think that they are automatically better than any person they disagree with, because to them, individual identity is to be sacrificed at the altar of group identity, and virtue is only obtained through doing that through having a group identity, first and foremost, with their ideology. And if you're not a part of that, then you're a bad person. This is how they justify thinking themselves as automatically better than you. They don't have to make logical arguments. They don't have to, you know, make sense. And when they're a part of Marxism, the ideology that insists the only thing that mediates relationships between people is power, then they are justified, A, by the first pillar of saying they're better than you, and B, by the second pillar of saying there's only such thing as power, by being openly tyrannical and corrupt like this, where they where they ignore things that are a hundred times worse. And they're letting murderers out on the street in New York to the point where they have to deploy the National Guard to protect their public transit systems. And then they fixate on, on their political opponent. And they invert reality even to the point of saying that they're protecting democracy while they try to remove their political opponent from the ballot 
and taking up all of his time so that he can't go to campaigns. And I'm not talking about Char on Brutal. <laughs> I'm talking about his actual campaign. They want to prevent him from going to rallies and speaking to people because this is politically motivated. It's interesting how the left only preys on the most damaged, broken people that have the most amount of resentment and hatred for objective reality and truth. But this has never happened before. This is historic. The left is acting out their totalitarian impulses. It is happening right now in the 21st century. The left is acting out their totalitarian impulses in the West. Next, I just want to show you this tweet by this broken leftist because it really pissed me off. Leftists know that they're lying. They know that what they're saying is completely wrong, and yet they still find themselves required to defend the incoherent position because otherwise they, they have to admit that they're frauds. Otherwise, they have to admit they have no argument and everything that they do is based on lies. Look at what he did not say here. It's not just about what he stated, which is the antithesis of reality, and I'm going to show you guys that in a second. It's, it's all the things he didn't say. First, just look at how desperate he is to maintain the status quo of his ideology. It's so funny to see how desperate they are, too. Fact is, the trial will determine if he's guilty. <laughs> Everything else is just gossip and opinions. They are so desperate for their ideology to be the only source of reality. And this is where you see the narcissism of the left, because it's one thing to be classically narcissistic, where you think that uh, people must constantly cater to you or conform to your life. That is one level of narcissism. Is an entirely new strata of narcissism to believe that reality itself must conform to you and you have no obligation to interface with reality. That is the narcissistic place leftists operate from because they don't think that logic and rationality have any place in determining what is true or not. The only thing that determines what's true is the matrices of their ideology, which hinges on victimhood identity politics and whether or not somebody is labeled a good or bad person. Guys, objective reality is not even a priority to them. It's not, it's not even third or fourth on the list. In fact, because their position is so narcissistic and incoherent, they view reality as oppressing them. In the same way, a person who disagrees with them is oppressing them because they've thrown out individual identity. They've said that logic and reason are oppressive constructs. They write the opposite of the truth and they're expecting any person who wants to be a good person to automatically agree with them. This is a cult of tyranny. This is a straitjacket of required lies. We are living through a totalitarian, identitarian moment in the history of the planet where the enlightened part of the world, the West, is under attack by people who hate reality, who are at war with objective truth. And remember, the reason why they are at war with objective truth is because their narcissism requires them to think that reality is made in the image of their ideology, ra rather than fastening themselves after the comprehensible nature of reality as defined by reason and rationality and logic and mental scrutiny, etc. Also keep in mind here, what you see is not just the lies, but the absence of what, of what they write. The fact that he doesn't mention that they're preventing him from seeing his son's graduation, the fact that he didn't mention that Trump has been indicted more times than Al Capone, and the country widely regards it, widely, I mean very widely, regards it as completely a sham. This is political persecution. It's just a witch hunt. This is a weaponization of systems that were coherent and are being perverted. Now, because the leftist judges, okay, I'll back up for a second. If you are a judge, your goal, your purpose is to exercise coherence in the law um, and pretty much everything that you do is an exercise of coherence, of objective frameworks being carried out. That's the purpose of enforcing laws. You carry out objective frameworks to obtain justice. Because the left doesn't believe in objective frameworks and they don't believe in justice, justice to them just means punishing people for disagreeing with their ideology. Leftist judges who are possessed by that ideology, their only necessity is not to be mentally coherent, but to view coherence itself as oppression and to punish anybody who doesn't agree with it. This is why there's a crisis right now of judges being politically um, you know, co-opted by the radical left. I talked about this years ago where the greatest threat to America will ultimately be when there's a two-tier justice system. And that's what, that's what we're seeing here. No mention of the endless crimes that are being committed in New York that they're not paying attention to, that they're not preventing by locking up the criminals. No mention of other political opponents that have done 10 times, 100 times worse that are facing not even a single court case. No mention of the blatant corruption that's going on here. Only the insistence that you must adhere to the ideology or you're a bad person. Look how desperate they are. Fact is, the trial will determine if he's guilty. Another reason they're targeting Trump, which you should be aware of, is that in the intersectionalist hierarchy, 
your virtue is determined by your victimhood status, and your victimhood status is determined by your identity. So when you think of it, Trump is a alpha, masculine, tall, white, billionaire, and so he's automatically guilty. <laughs> no, anything you accuse him of, he must be guilty because he's automatically a bad person. You accuse him of X, Y, and Z, oh, he must be guilty in X, Y, and Z. This is their stand-in for thinking. This is their stand-in for justice. This is their stand-in for coherence itself. This is the architecture, the framework of their ideology. It's how it operates. If you accuse a tall, white, masculine billionaire of being a bad person, he must be a bad person, right? Otherwise, our ideology is fraudulent. Quickly, quickly, call him a bad person. Oh, he's running against us? Even better. I truly do think, I truly believe that most of America, probably 70%, is cognizant enough to recognize the fraudulence. The 20 to 30 percent are mentally broken enough, have had their thought processes robbed from them by the left-wing ideology to the point where all they can recognize is the fact that they're being seen as frauds and sort of an animalistic instinct type reaction. And so they get anxious and worried at being resisted. Because again, once you buy into the leftist ideology, the only thing you believe in is power. So 20, 20 to 30 percent of the population also understands that they're being seen as tyrants here and that they are acting as tyrants, but their only worry is that they will meet resistance. If you look at all these headlines, and I understand that, you know, mainstream media is dying. Every single day they're fizzling out and being replaced by X. But if you look at these headlines, all of them, they're all negative. All of them are negative. It's very, very eerie to see 100% of the establishment being wielded against the American people. I do think most of the population, like I said, is aware, because when you look at the the total corruption that's going on in these in these areas because it's so it's it's lawless it is evil it's mentally broken cities like new york are increasingly viewed as just wastelands normally what keeps you know the left from deteriorating to a place like this is the connection in dialogue with people who they disagree with but because they don't believe in objective reality they demonize anyone who disagrees with them so they don't have to contend with what they have to say. And they view the conceptual reaching of a coherent conclusion as oppression in and of itself, that there's no dialogue with the right. Normally what would happen is the left would say, oh, we need to be more tolerant of these things, et cetera, et cetera. And the right would say, we need to lock up criminals and we need to prosecute people who break the law and we can't have you know murderers coming out on the street repeatedly. And then there would be a city that has some sort of creativity and also it would be safe because criminals would be put in jail. But because they just demonize anyone who disagrees with them and refuse to listen to what they have to say, they can't do any of that. So they're just, they're, their cities turn into this, and, and so they just live in wastelands. They just live in wastelands of brutal mental incoherence and debauchery and immorality. The country's in deep trouble. The country's in super deep trouble. The hatred for reality is at the, is at the crux of their resentment. New York is literally letting murderers, repeat murderers, out of jail and burning the American flag. That's, that's where they've gotten... That's how the world sees them. And you weren't meant to be able to see them like this. X was supposed to be controlled. It was supposed to remain Twitter. These counter narratives that you're able to see, even the fact that we know that Donald Trump can't attend his, his son's graduation is information that you weren't supposed to be able to know. You shouldn't be able to resist them. This right here, all these headlines are the only bits of information they want you to be able to have access to. And the fact that you can just see information that blatantly destroys every single narrative they want you to believe enrages them. Just like the existence of tall, white, masculine billionaires enrages them. They desire tyranny. They desire authoritarianism. You weren't supposed to be able to see this, but you can because X is free. Look at how mentally destroyed these people look. Look at how ravaged ravage their psyches are you weren't meant to be able to see this the left requires you to lie so much that's the reason why they desire tyranny that's the reason why they tell themselves a story that there's only such thing as power because they're required to lie to themselves they're required to lie to them they're required to lie to themselves so many different ways about reality it makes them miserable because when you lie to yourself about reality you come out of congruence with truth you live a life that is not congruent with the objective world around you and this creates anxiety because the world constantly reminds you that you're wrong and so you get to a place where you're wearing a skirt and a tank top as a guy burning the american flag in new york thinking that you're defending democracy as you stand in favor of political persecution of your political opposition actually they don't really think and they don't think that they're good people they are forced from their narcissistic framework to engage in such words as good simply because they must pervert what already exists. But really all that they desire is power and perversion.
That's what you see when you lift up the mask behind these psychotic threats to democracy. The world does see these people as frauds. The world does see these people as tyrants. Guys, subscribe to the channel. I appreciate all of the new people. I hope this video was okay. I feel like the first version that I recorded was may have been better, but the audio wasn't working for some reason. Maybe it was a matrix attack, who knows? My audio almost always works, so. If this video wasn't quite up to the quality that I typically deliver, I'm sorry for that, but I had to get this video out to you guys today. So hit the like button, subscribe if you're still watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.